Hello guys, welcome to a new video and in this new video we are going to go over uh, VLAN hacking, VLAN double checking and also some STP attacks that you can perform or that a hacker could perform on your network and we're also going to show you guys how to, um, how you can mitigate these attacks, okay? So, on the video before we have, we went over um, ARP spoofing and we did ARP spoofing with Kali Linux, we also did some Mac spoofing with Kali Linux and we did some um, Mac or Cam overflows with Kali Linux. And then after each video, we show you guys how you could um, defend against these attacks, right? And if you have not seen those videos, you can go ahead and go to my, uh, you can go ahead to my YouTube channel, right? Click on my YouTube channel and go to all my videos and you're going to see right here, the Kali Linux DHCP spoofing attack, post mitigation. And also we have the ARP poisoning attack and then I also have show you guys how to stop it and then the cam overflow attack and then how to stop it at the end. So if you're gonna you want to go ahead and take a look at those before this video you can go ahead and do that and then come back here. Um, so like I said what we're going to go over is just a nice PowerPoint on the VLAN hopping, VLAN double tagging and also some STP attacks. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's go ahead and present this PowerPoint, this nice PowerPoint that I put together just for you guys because I love you guys. So VLAN hopping, right? What is VLAN hopping? Well, in a basic VLAN hopping attack, the attacker takes advantage of the fact that dynamic trunking protocol is enabled by default on most switches. So, as soon, so the switches by default um, have this um, protocol configured, uh, which is dynamic trunking protocol, right? So out of the box, whenever you plug in or power on a Cisco switch, it has DTP um, enabled by default, which is really bad. Um, so what happens is, is the network attacker configures a system to use DTP to negotiate a trunk link between the switch, which is really easy. And I'm going to show you guys in another video how you could do that from Kali Linux using your senior. Okay, so and what happens after that, after we negotiate a, a trunk link between the switch and the Kali Linux machine that we're going to be using, um, the hacker or the attacker is a member of all the VLANs that are trunked on the switch and can hop between VLANs, basically just hopping between VLANs. In other words, the attacker can send and receive traffic on all those VLANs. The best way to prevent a basic VLAN hopping attack is to turn off DTP on all ports and explicitly, explicitly configure trunking mode or access mode as appropriate on each port. So, what you could do is that you could you could do a switch port trunk, um, you do a switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q, and then you do a switch port mode trunking, and then you do a switch port mode trunk allow VLANs, and then you put the VLANs that you want to allow, and the ones that are allowed, the rest are going to be denied by default. So whatever you put allow, then the other ones are not going to be allowed on that trunk, and then you can turn off after you form the trunk, you can turn turn it on to a switch for no negotiate as well, or you can also turn it on, turn the switch port into a um, into an access port, and then you can turn off um, trunking because whenever you turn on uh, or put the port into an access port, it still it can still send um, DTP messages. So you want to do a switch port. No negotiate after you do the switch port mode access. Okay, so moving on. So now we are going to go over the VLAN double tagging is. And the double tagging or double encapsulated um, is a VLAN hopping attack that takes advantage of the way the hardware operates on switches. So some switches perform only one level of 802.1Q decapsulation and allow an attacker in a specific situation to embed. Um, a second 802.1Q tag inside the frame. So this allow allows the frame to go to a VLAN that a router that the outer 802.1Q tag did not specify. An important characteristic of double tag and encapsulation happen attack is that it can only work even if DTP is disabled on the attacker's access port. So here's an illustration uh, illustration from a book that I stole. Um, and this is from 31 before your CCNA security. So I'll go ahead and get that book. It's, it's a really nice book. And what happens is that 
you see that the attacker right here sends a um, 802 that one 802 that one Q attack but what it did was he added another VLAN as you can see right here it put VLAN 10 and 20 so when that switch gets it what's going to happen is it's going to get rid of that VLAN 10 but then VLAN 20 is here and what the switch is going to say like it's going to be like it's going to read it and it's going to say oh you want to go to VLAN 20 and then it's going to send it to VLAN 20 to um, switch B and switch B is going to send it to that VLAN 20 um, subnet over here and they are going to receive it but the only thing is that it cannot go back because the subnet over here is not going to um, it's not going to do a double tag um, or a double tagging attack on its own right so this only works one way so what um, an attacker could do is just perform a denial service attack by sending a lot of double tagging um, 802 that one Q on the trunk link right and then I service to the subnet so that could happen and moving on now to STP attack and STP stands for spanning tree protocol and it is when a network attacker can use STP to change the topology of networks so that the attackers host appears to be a root bridge with a higher priority so the attacker sends out a bridge port data, which is BPDUs. This is what switches um, send between, this is what switches send when they are communicating, BPDUs. So what's going to happen is the attacker is going to act as a switch and send a better bridge ID and thus becomes a root bridge. As a result of as a result, traffic between the two switches passes through the new root bridge, which is actually the attacker. So when this is a root bridge, it becomes a root bridge, right? What's going to happen is that um, all the traffic is going to go to the root because everything goes to the root bridge, right? So this is how it becomes, um, and this is how it could happen. And you can perform this attack with a Kali Linux machine that we're going to do also on a later video. After I do the um, VLAN hopping attack, I'm going to do the STP attack. So be on the lookout for that video. So go ahead and subscribe to my channel so you can see my videos as soon as they come out. And how can you um, stop this STP attacks? Well, there's a bunch of ways that you could do this. So STP man manipulation attacks use the Cisco STP stability mechanism to enhance the overall performance of the switches and to reduce the time that is lost during topology changes. These are recommended practices using STP stability mechanism. So this is what you want to do whenever you are trying to stop STP attacks. So one of them that you could do is port fast. So what this does is it immediately brings an interface configured as an access port or trunk port to the forward state. Actually, it's not recommended to do it on a trunk port. No, Cisco does not recommend it doing that. And when, what port fast does is that when it brings, um, it brings the port, um, it brings the port to the forward state from a blocking state bypassing the listening learning and the listening and the learning states and you should apply this to all end user ports like for a server and for a computer or host and also that needs to have access to a DHCP server you should do port fast and port fast port fast should only be configured when there's a host attached to the port like I said do not do that in between switches only do it whenever there is a, um, a host or an end user attached like a server or a computer and and not another switch okay so BPDU guard is another one that you could configure and BPDU guard immediately um, error disables a port that receives a BPDU typically it is used when port fast enable when port fast is enabled on the port so you should apply BPDU guard to all the port fast port because when you enable port fast you want to make sure that that you, you you are sure that they're only going to be computers connected to it so computers do not send bpdu guards or bpdu packets only switches send bpdu packets right so whenever you enable that port fast and then bpdu guard what you're saying is that a switch should not be plugged into this port if a switch is plugged into this port or it receives a bpdu packet what's going to happen is that is going to error disable that port right and another one is the root guard uh, the root guard prevents an inappropriate switch from becoming the root bridge 
and root guard limits the switch ports out of which the root bridge may be negotiated and this should be applied to all ports that should not become root ports right and and this one uh, gets rid of this um, root um, root attack over here that is happening in this picture and then we have the loop bar the loop guard and the loop guard prevents alternate or root ports from becoming designated ports because of a failure that leads to a only unidirectional link and you should apply to all ports that are or can become non-negotiated okay so that's how you can um, stop those STP attacks and on the next video guys we're going to go over how you can perform the VLAN hopping attack so if you want to go ahead and wait for my video or go to the next video what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a VLAN hopping attack and then I'm going to show you how we can stop that VLAN hopping attack and if you have a Twitter account, guys, go ahead and follow me on Twitter at CCNA Daily Tips. If you don't have a Twitter account, go ahead and create a Twitter account and then follow me. So thank you guys for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.